All right, Charlie, you ready for this? We got a lot to yes, film yes, today. Yes. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, hi. I hope you're all staying safe, staying healthy. Love you all. No, I love you all. So today I'm going to be talking about the do's and don'ts of your cockatiel cage. Now let me just put it out there. Obviously cockatiels are not supposed to, I mean birds in general, are not supposed to live in their cage 24-7. They need a lot of free time outside of their cage. My birds free roam around my room like they just do their own thing. They love it. They also get a lot of outside time, all that kind of jazz. But they do use their bird cage to sleep or I put them in there when I like go to work or something like that. Even though your bird might be using their cage for like the smallest part of the day, it's always good to have really good things in that cage so it benefits them. Even though they might not spend their time in there, when they do, it's gonna be good for them. So you may or may not have seen this TikTok that I posted, I think it was a week ago. It has blown up and I am so overwhelmed with the amount of attention that this TikTok got. And what? Where did all these people come from? Like, it's so overwhelming. I'm just sitting here like... Also, before we go anywhere, I just want to say that I don't support Peter. I just want to put that out there. I unfortunately used that as my example in the video. I didn't even think twice about it. It just kind of happened. I was like, oh yeah, that's a well-known animal welfare group. People will know what I'm talking about because if I was to use like an animal welfare group around my area, people wouldn't know what I'm talking about. They'd be like, what does that even mean? But yeah, basically I'm super overwhelmed with the amount of attention that this TikTok got. But also at the same time, I'm also very, very concerned because one, a lot of people in the comments, well, not a lot, Quite a few people in the comments didn't know these were bad for birds. That's a problem. Uh, number two, there were certain people that were like, I have these in my bird cage and I'm not doing anything about it. That's a problem. And number three, <laughs> Number three, there were people that were educated, like their eyes were opened, and I was very grateful that I could do that for them. So I'm making this video to kind of emphasize on this. This is not gonna make sense. Hi, welcome to my channel. But yeah, so if you're coming from that TikTok, hi, thank you so much for you know educating yourself on this topic um, because there are certain people that are too stubborn to do that. But I'm not blaming anybody but the pet shops for this one because let me take you back, right? Let me set the scene here. There was a small girl, little me, who was purchasing her first cockatiel for the first time. She went to a pet store because like, unless you know a breeder or unless you have a rescue nearby that's where you get birds from most of the time and the pet shop assistant recommended everything that I mentioned in that one TikTok for my bird and it was gonna be beneficial not only that but he also gave me this small ass cage and called it a good day he was like yep that's all you need for a cockatiel you're good to go here's a um hard to swallow pill for all of y'all at home pet shop assistants most of the time don't really care about animal welfare or the care of any of the animals that they're selling. They only care about that dollar dollar bill. Pet shops are so, so wrong in so many different ways. And like, of course there's some good ones, but a majority of them are quite bad. But anyway, that's another rant for another day. Today's video is going to be the do's and don'ts and of your cockatiel cage. Let's go. Huh. So I'll run through the topics that I mentioned in the TikTok, which are these ones here, and I'm just going to talk about them, tell you why they're bad, maybe some alternatives that are really good for your bird instead, yeah, whatever else I feel like talking about. <laughs> All right, so let's start off easy. Don't use Dow Perches, but do use natural branches. Whoa. You can buy them online. Or if you're lucky enough, like myself, and you're from Australia, where birds like cockatiels are actually native, you can just go out into the wilderness and pick out some really lovely branches from some safe trees that cockatiels in the wild love. For example, the branches and sticks that I have in the girls' cages are actually from gum trees, which are wild cockatiels' favorite native tree to hang around on. Now, if you aren't in Australia, you can actually go out into the wilderness as well and pick out some beautiful branches from the outside world but you just have to make sure that they are from safe trees and there are plenty of lists online that are going to tell you what is a safe tree and what isn't a safe tree so just make sure you're noting that also when you get those branches make sure you take them home wash them with warm water give them a light sanding down you don't want to remove too much texture but it's just enough to get like all the grit and grot off it and then you air dry it and bam you can put that bad boy in your bird's cage now dow perches are bad why let me explain to be honest they don't really have any positive benefits whatsoever. The only benefit a Dow Perch has, in my opinion, is the fact that it's free. It comes with every single bird cage you buy. Dow Perches also cause a lot of issues with your bird's feet, such as bumblefoot and arthritis. Bumblefoot is an infection on your bird's feet that results in swollen, painful feet, which makes it impossible for your birds to stand on. They're so uncomfortable. This can be caused by rough surfaces like sandpaper perches, cement perches, which I'll touch on base a little bit later, or it can be caused by thin sticks like Dow Perches because your bird's claws are always going to be in the same diameter and they're also applying the same amount of pressure on their feet every time they're on a dow perch, which makes their claws weak, and that's when they develop bumble. Dow perches are also that thin that your bird comes 
can't get proper exercise from them. They're just walking back and forth on the, this skinny little dowel perch, whereas with a natural branch, for example, this one, it is the same thickness all around, but it's got nice bumps and texture in it where your birds can grip their feet. It just gives them a lot more exercise in their little toes and stimulates their brain activity, which is really good for them, obviously. There's just a lot of benefits when it comes to natural branches over dowel perches. Obviously, your birds get their main exercise from flying, but this all helps as well. You can, however, have dowel perches in your bird cage if you have other variations of branches, that's fine. As long as your birds are using the natural perches over the dowel perches, but personally, and this is just my opinion, I wouldn't have dowel perches just because they have no benefit to my birds. I'd rather just fill my cage with natural branches. Also to mention, natural wooden branches are actually really good for your bird's beak and nails as they naturally trim them. So that's always a one up. We love that. This is one natural branch that I got from my bird cage and it is a quite a skinny one, but it's got quite a lot of curve to it, which is good. Charlie might get spooked by this. But I have a massive wooden That's perch massive. as well to give that variation of texture and size. Here's another one. It's probably the in-between size of the other two. They have poop on them. I'm sorry. But this is a bird video. Like, there's going to be poop. And this is one I actually brought online. Whoa. And it's just one that you screw on Whoa. to the side of your cage. Stop being spooked by this. You know what this is. <laughs> So don't use cement perches to trim your bird's nails and beaks naturally, but do use natural branches and pumice perches, or I call these calcium sticks, so I'm gonna start saying that. Cement perches are actually really bad for your bird's feet as they are a very rough texture, and if an accident was to occur, they can cause a lot of foot injuries and just a lot of sores in general. I know breeders and pet shop assistants like to recommend the cement perches for trimming your bird's nails and beak, but obviously there are better alternatives out there that I'll touch on in a second. The little cement particles on a cement perch are also very dangerous because if your bird was to chew on them and accidentally swallow the cement particles, which is actually easy to do if the cement perch is not made properly, that can cause stomach problems and it can be fatal. I would just avoid them altogether, like they don't sound like a good time for me, especially because there's other alternatives out there that are much more safer for your bird. So let's go through them. Natural branches naturally trim your bird's nails and beak, just like birds would in the wild. Like birds don't have cement to walk on in the wild. Like I've never seen a cockatiel running around on the cement just down the street, you know, like they're always going to be using natural branches to trim their nails and beak. And then calcium perches. This one is a massive calcium perch. You can get smaller ones, but I like to get the bigger ones because I don't know, my girls just, they look more comfortable on them. Like that, I, that's just me. See the texture there. They've also gnawed it right here. Like this must be a good spot to gnaw at because that is a massive hole. It's not rough at all. It's quite a nice texture. <laughs> Where did the sun go? Hello. Now cuttlefish bones are also really good for naturally trimming your bird's beak and it's also a great calcium intake as well. So just in case you needed any more convincing, that, that, there it is. If you are struggling with your bird's nails and beak, you can always go to your aviarian vet and they can trim them slash file them down for you. Like that's what they're there for. Aviarian vets are there to help and that is always an option. bird please. Alright now I did touch on this in the TikTok and a lot of people don't actually know why. This did surprise me a lot. I don't really have a do for this one because this is just a don't like it's, it's a massive don't. Don't have nesting boxes in your bird cage. It's not necessary unless you are a experienced breeder but Still, you don't put them in a bird cage, you put them in an aviary. Nesting box equals birds, right? They can hide in it, they can sleep in it. Like, Miss Girl, no, you are wrong. So nesting boxes will only impact your bird negatively, like cause unwanted hormonal issues, like unwanted egg laying, aggression, and biting. It can also cause a lot of territorial behavior, which is not good. Like, birds may sleep in tree hollows in the wild because like that is their safe space, but for your bird at home, their bird cage is gonna be their safe spot. So they don't need a nesting box to hide in or sleep in. And if they want to hide away from the environment they're in, then like maybe they're not in the right environment in the first place. Like maybe your environment isn't a good one for a bird. Like for example, you have a cat or you have a dog that won't leave the bird cage alone. Like maybe you should kind of rethink that. But yeah, they'll sleep on their favorite perch in their cage and they'll get all cozy in there. They don't need a nesting box. Like birds don't even sleep in nesting boxes to begin with. They just breed in them. That's all they're there for. But I always thought that was kind of like a common knowledge thing. Um, TikTok has proven that.
<sighs> okay, now this is a massive one because pet stores love recommending these to every single bird owner and they are everywhere. These are everywhere. People have them in their cage. It's very dangerous. I've just made a TikTok on this subject as well. So hopefully you see that floating around. Happy hearts. We're going to talk about happy hearts for a second here. Happy hearts in the bird community are known as the death heart. It is very ironic because the name literally has happy in it. Let's talk about why happy hearts are not good for your bird. So the fiber on a happy heart can be ingested accidentally. Whether they're chewing on the happy heart or they're just moving through the happy heart with their beak, they can accidentally ingest those fibers and it can cause fatal stomach blockage. It's either you get surgery for your bird that has stomach blockage issues from the happy heart or it can pass away. Like that's kind of the juggle that you're dealing with when you have a happy heart. They have also been known to injure birds. When a bird chews on a happy heart, it can cause loose threads. Your bird can accidentally get tangled up in those loose threads and cause a lot of injuries to their wings, their legs, and their neck, which can cause strangling, which you kind of know what happens after strangling. And if that's not to convince you, otherwise happy hearts also cause hormonal issues, which can include aggression, biting, unwanted egg laying once again. The list goes on, but anyway, birds think that this little dark enclosed area is a perfect potential nesting spot. So anything that is a enclosed dark area, you don't want your bird to be anywhere near because they can just get hormonal from that. Birds are very hormonal, as we have learned. Okay, bye. Ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. Yeah, even if your happy heart isn't that fluffy, fibery material, it can still cause unwanted hormonal issues. All in all, just get rid of the happy heart. We don't want it. We don't, not welcome here. Sorry. So for an alternative of a happy heart, like if your bird loves laying down, I would recommend getting some platforms for your cage or seagrass mats where you can kind of hang it from a cage, have it in like a hammock form or just have it like that. Like your bird's going to love that. Are you picking it? And then the last topic that I'm gonna to touch on today because I'm exhausted, sitting here is hurting my back. I'm getting so old. Don't have mirrors in your birdcage, but do have foraging toys. This was another surprise on TikTok and people don't actually understand the psychological issues that mirrors can cause in your bird. About 60% of the comments on that one TikTok was, I have a mirror, nothing's wrong with my bird. Oh honey, here we go. Let me run you through why mirrors are terrible for your bird. Birds cannot recognize their own reflection. Putting a mirror in their birdcage is going to not only cause psychological issues, but also hormonal issues and behavior issues. Like, yeah, get it, I guess. They think it's another bird, obviously, and they fall in love with that bird. Talk about self-obsessed, like, honey. Excuse me. So yeah, they become obsessed with that other bird and they get very possessive over it. Their whole entire life now revolves around that one bird because they're so in love with themselves. So yeah, mirrors aren't as innocent as you think they are and they just aren't worth your bird's mental health. They cause hormonal issues like aggression, biting, regurgitation, yuck. They cause a lot of behavioral issues like your bird ain't gonna wanna spend time with you. Mirrors are not a good companion for your bird. You should be your bird's companion and if you can't fill those shoes, then you need to get another bird. That also means twice the food, twice the work, and twice the mess. And if you're not up for that commitment, then maybe a bird wasn't for you in the first place. This is why a lot of birds get rehomed and abandoned because people don't actually realize how much hard work they are. They just think, oh, that's a bird. That's so easy to look after. And oh, that, no. <laughs> yeah, they need at least four plus hours of your attention every single day. So if you are not up for that for the next 15 years, then a bird is not for you, I'm very sorry. So instead of mirrors, I would be replacing mirrors with foraging toys to keep your bird occupied throughout the day. Foraging toys are so beneficial to your bird's mental health. Like it stimulates them, they enjoy it, they love it. This here is a foraging toy. It's, don't be scared, you know what this is. You see this, Emma? You did this. So this is made out of natural woven pieces that your bird can just chew all day long. Obviously my girls have had a great time with the top ball. For some reason they don't like the other ones, just the top one. This is another one, it's got really great materials that they can chew on, forage through. And of course seagrass toys, I can't recommend enough. These are really great for your bird. My girls have absolutely destroyed this. This used to be a nice big square. It's now a little square. You can also make foraging trays. There are heaps of resources online that can help you with making your own foraging tray. You can make like cardboard toys. You can make your own toys. Like there's a lot of things that you can do for your birds. Because I know how expensive bird toys are. They can be very expensive. My personal favorite out of the foraging toy choice is probably the bird kebabs. They are awesome, but they're so expensive. So I have yet to get another one. But yeah, research some great foraging toys for your bird because that will keep them occupied throughout the day. That will keep their brain stimulated. It's good for them. Whereas a mirror, 
are terrible. The psychological issues aren't worth the risk. I just wouldn't. It literally looks like it's about to rain outside. So I am going to finish the video here because the lighting has just, it's out the window. It's gone. Goodbye. The TikTok I made, I still can't get over it. I can't believe it's blown up. The comments have shown that there are people out there that are so uneducated and so stubborn. They're not going to change their ways. It hurts. It breaks my heart. I hope there's people out there that are willing to change their ways for the benefit of their bird. And this is why I'm making this video. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below so that you can let me know if you enjoy my content. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram and TikTok so you don't miss out on my content when I'm not posting here. Without further ado, I'm going to love you and leave you. And I'll see you on my next video next Friday. So ciao for now.